Uh, jeno yoweli kakuta mseveni mutabani we family uh, Bagude muna be Anti uh, chino tebashi tegirira Tebashi tegirira Uo tino chigena kuwa weshti uh, Chagula nyi senta muru Batu mbubwa nibi ya wagamba Anti nino vigena kuwa tukako Daravitu ukiride uh, Wakisubi za anti ngena kuwa kuwa Mungeli ya rabada bastayo Ila mungenda kuwa tiwa omu kuomu Omu kuomu uh, Batuteke mabiga we mitayimbwa Musiwe ati mbubinyo nyole mbubitevye Aluashi mbade mtulogu nyama na Uganda Mbatu saa kubula yonoku Bauno kubesi mizomi uo msolo Ate muliwe Biona biona naba mubie Biona mga gabo mbade mubie Biona mbade mkoze Biona muziko miewe nsi mizidemba na Uganda Banyilizo Balo oza Vino biyari biya kusaga biyari biya ruwari Katini no chagula nyi senta mulo Bagobu waini asimbo nde Anjali na tuandike Tulabea katambi kano Mbwe kuchibotu watu chitandika Ate nitu kiende masu We As some of us who are partners In establishment of godliness, true godliness in Uganda. Uh, we are motivated by love. We're motivated by, by value. We're motivated by the fact that we are out accountable to the creator. We do not believe that we are descendants of monkeys like faithless people say. Uh, we don't believe that we just appeared from anywhere. We believe that there's an intelligent designer in every um, thing that exists. And much more, what doesn't exist uh, or what we see and what we don't see. If we don't see air, we know there's a creator of air and we are not going to be fooled to think that we just exist from nowhere. It just doesn't make sense. We cannot believe that. But um, as we fight this war, as we stand with uh, God, we also I want to encourage those who are looked at the bad things and feel like God has abandoned us. Is how you look at something that determines what you believe. Because there's always, always, always uh, victories, and we're having so many victories. Point to you that, um, for example, the ambassador of Canada, yes, she has been uh, told that, hey, what she's doing is bad. You cannot stand against humanity and do things that destroy or partner with somebody who just destroys life. So now she knows, and we know the regime is going to come up with lies. Uh, so that is a victory, and we need to thank God for that. The UAE. So these men who had a lot of arrogancy to a point that when Museven was speaking in Kayunga was like, nothing happens unless NRM says so. God is holding them accountable through their own people, through their own children. I have been there and I've seen it. Their own children are standing up and saying, no, you cannot be our fathers, our grandfathers, and you bring us stones when you're supposed to bring us fish. And what they are doing in Uganda, the looting is just destroying the generations of these grandchildren who they are brought to this planet. And God is using them, I have seen that, to stand up and say, no, we want to progress in Uganda that is clean, not a Uganda that is being is destroying human life with garbage. They see this, these recent protests, I saw. And I had, I, I, I associate with many of these uh, elite kids and they now understand that it's not about the wealth that their parents have amassed through looting. It is about the next life that you are going to live as these looters are going to die off. Many of them are old and sick and dying off. So God is taking Uganda into a direction that these guys cannot handle. 
And then for us who continue to speak and hold them accountable in different ways, we have created so much work for them. They are getting sleepless. And I want to encourage everyone out there that every time you add your voice to just saying, no, we, got, we need a better Uganda. We need a better environment. We need a normal process for our children to progress to life. You create more work for these people. And remember, we're the majority. As the majority, as we multiply and speak out, the minority gets so worked up. They get so tired and they start falling off. So this is another way we can continue exerting pressure. I have seen that even the people who used to live, to, that time we used, there were a few voices, but the voices are now growing bigger. And we want to thank God that he put the, the elected president of Uganda, the one we elected, and we'll never pretend about it, is Robert Chagulani Sentamu that was elected. You can do whatever you want. That is the truth. And we belong to the side of the truth because that's what we want to live for. And it's because we know that is what God has created us to do. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do to others like you want them to do to you. That principle can never be argued against by any written book, any philosophy, any kind of thing. But as every time we put that in our heart and our minds, we start heading the right direction. So I encourage you guys, anybody who was out there and uh, is feeling like, oh, the devil is winning, you're not looking right. But look right and see how encouraged and thankful to God you are going to be. Lastly, lastly, yes, so many diversions as we know. But as we talk about this recent uh, diversion that has slaughtered so many people, the garbage that buried people and everybody has seen the, how much nobody, no institution in church took it as an urgency to run out of there. And for me, I always hold the church, number one. There is no church, no pastor that got up and even if it means jumping on a border border to go out there and get a hope and help to rescue the lives that were losing breath under that rubbish. That tells you the kind of institutions you're having. Is that what Jesus would do? Sit back and do nothing? No wonder in times of disaster, like COVID, the ideology of the church in Uganda cannot make it essential. You find journalists are essential. Even teachers are essential. Even drivers are essential. But the church is non-essential. They just send them back home. How does the ideology of that powerless institution help you? So you, who goes to church, is what God wants to use to change the church. It's you to stand up, not those men who talk too much. And please remember, we have been conformed to not looking at the actions of men, the fruit of men, but we have been conformed to, if they speak well, then those have integrity. Integrity is not about what you speak. There are many men, even the devil speaks the word of God. He said, he told, uh, um, he told uh, Jesus, it is written that if you jump off that high place, he'll send the angels to rescue you. That was the devil speaking the word of God. So how can you tell me that me just speaking 
the, 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 the word of God without the actions. I am not an agent of the devil. It has to be actions. And I would rather somebody shut up and use their character and action than get all the good words and speak and confuse people. That is what is happening in Uganda. Be careful about these people who stand up and shout and attach, receive. This, this year you're going to get a husband. This year you will have children and you're, you're not going to struggle for anything. Those are words. God is interested in actions because the devil spoke the word of God. So that ideology, we need to be very careful. They can speak so well, but after they have spoken, watch what they do. Museveni has spoken the word of God many times, but what are the actions? Somebody goes to street to partner so that they speak against looting and corruption. What does he do? You go to the street, see what happens. You're being sponsored by foreigners. If I'm being sponsored by a foreigner to fight corruption, how am I evil? You see? So he's on the other side. He's just an agent of evil. But he has caught the church, the ideology of the church, other institutions. And you've seen what has happened. None of these run to that place, that garbage site that killed people. None of them. Because they're powerless. So be very careful when you go and believe in all those ideologies and watch all politicians. They speak so well. But watch their actions. Is there any change they have brought? Have they put their lives in danger for your sake? Because that's what the leaders are supposed to do. Motivated and driven by what is right beyond death. So be encouraged. Listen, get the good, but don't take these people as speaking is the same as having integrity. They are not the same. Don't take it. Watch them and confront them. Why are you doing this? Why haven't you done this? How come you speak like this, but you are conniving with the people who are destroying the future of the country? So, just as an encouragement, guys, God is real. And it's us sometimes who let his way down. He uses us to bring value to places where he puts us. He doesn't come from anywhere and do the work himself. No, it is through us. And one day he's going to hold us accountable that I was there. I gave you wisdom. I gave you hands. I gave you a mouth. I gave you a place to be. What did you do? I gave you a country. I gave you an identity. You are a Ugandan. You saw what Kenyans did. They stood up. They said no. They went to politicians and their homes and they told them what to do is bad. They confronted all the hideouts that were hiding all this loot. And they exposed it. Why are you quiet? You know exactly what is happening, but you're silent. But God has shown you even through Kenya that what you know, you should speak out. So there's no excuse. There's no excuse. Don't count on life after death of reward from God by just going to church to pray and fast and then listen to the man of God and touch and fight generational curses. There are no generational curses. If you use the principle of God, you see the Chinese, they don't believe in God, but they use the principles of God. Look how they have value. And we're even getting money from them. We are the ones who are in debt. And they are the ones who are progressing. So for us, we have so many churches and we shout so much about God. How is it we don't have value? There is something wrong. Stop that nonsense and take action, not words. God is not deaf. 
You don't have to shout at God. No. He can see and see your action. Thank you so much. Um, sorry, I believe I've, I've taken a little longer than, you know, I'm supposed to. But I'll hand back to you, um, either Joseph or uh, Dorcas or um, anybody out there. Thank you so much, so uh, much. Uh, uh, Reggie. Uh, Ismail is uh, there, but he's muted still. I don't know what's happening with Ismail. Um, you can you can hear technical issues. But, no? but yes, thank you so much, uh, 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 Mr. Reggie, again for those beautiful words. Uh, uh, as you said, God is interested in action, not words. Um, very, very, um, that is a, the biggest uh, takeaway from your comments, um, actions rather than words, uh, you know, whether from pastors or politicians, what are you doing? What are you doing to move Uganda forward, society forward? How are you delivering us from the situation we're in now? What are you doing beyond words? So thank you so much. And that applies to all of us. So thank you so much, Reggie. Uh, you said a lot, but I think that was very, very important in terms of what we do going forward within the struggle. Thank you so much. And uh, with that, I I don't know either we'll make, I see Mr. William again, he has some remarks, but maybe, uh, yeah, let me call Mr. I wanted to make some opening remarks too, but let me call Mr. McGinney first. And, uh, and then see what he has to say, and then I'll follow him. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Ms. Mgeni? Well, my break is done. I was just trying to raise my hand so that I can say one or two things before I run away to work. You can see my background. I'm in the hospital. And so I was, I was like, <laughs> I was listening to, <laughs> to Reiki. Mange <laughs> noti. <laughs> a guy with someone on the mountain. Well, uh, Canada, I think, is uh, where I wanted to base my point and uh, to encourage so many Ugandans or those who have been protesting in, in the in the diaspora. You don't know how much that Canada whip is going to do for 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 for, for migrants. Like I told you, yes, the reasons for immigrations are there. And uh, who is a protected Ugandan who is in the US? I am one. In fact, I was seeing uh, today, I was like, uh, one of the questions they normally ask us at uh, the interview when you are being uh, granted asylum, the question they ask you is, is there any threat that you'd like to tell us where you are in the US? Do you have anybody threatening you? Do you have any threat? And uh, the people of Canada, the threat has been seen. I am a bit worried for whoever appeared in that much, although the oppressed have a right to protest. The oppressed, by the way, have a right to show up because this is not home. This is not home. So th th there is there is a bit of uh, strength in that protest that you can go for anybody who was in yellow and you want to ask them what they are doing here. I wish I had time. I wish I had time. The, the, the list of deportation would be very big. Would be very big. Because that question is asked, let us know. Those who offer us protection ask you, let us, anytime you feel you are threatened, let us know. And that protest has defined something that if you used, very many people might go home. Because it's not a matter of coming to start shouting in these countries where we are. It's not a matter of coming to create a third world country here. Some of us, because of what we are contributing to where we are, 
the country like Iowa is struggling to see gems, what do we need to do to keep you? They ask me. You're one person who has come to, the, to America, you have come to Iowa, and you have made a difference, not only to your community, but even to America itself. And if people like you make America great, you'll find me everywhere. I'll even show you pictures. <laughs> I can dare to take a picture and put in Trump, Trump's T-shirt. I can dare to take a picture and put on Vivek's T-shirt. I can, right now, if you see me, I'm in the T-shirts of my, my house rep. I'm doing campaigns for him. And that is the role of a citizenship, the role of an active citizen. Being in America means you assimilate and become what America American values are, ah, you hold them. So a few people, a few of Ugandans who want to bring a third world here, there's danger in that. And it can be an assignment that so many of us can take on and just say that let, we need sanity. And by the time we start fighting for sanity here, sanity will be coming at home. On the other hand, at home, I was just so happy to see, of course, lives were lost. Lives were lost in Kitezi. But a person like me, I think I'm now happy that uh, Museven can deploy against protesters. He can deploy against protesters. Younger people rise up and you're seeing tankers, you're seeing, but now you see what garbage has done. They come with their guns and they're stranded. They don't know what to do. And that garbage, I saw two days, three days ago, people have started just throwing garbage because they have no solution. And the solution is not temporary. A solution is not temporary. Now, if they don't care about garbage, because garbage is being produced by all institutions, right from schools, hospitals, including even the army itself. So can we be a country that can be liberated by garbage? <laughs> it's sad. Can we be a country that can be liberated by garbage? Because garbage is going to cause problems in Uganda. Incineration is not being done. There's an example from Ethiopia where they are incinerating garbage and turning it into electricity. I remember before I left Uganda, I even had written a proposal. Some of us have really been in that country struggling with, in fact, recently I even said that I'm now tired of thinking for Uganda. I went to Malaba, truck Busia. Mangeni, you come from there, you know what I'm talking about. In one night, we have 3,500 trucks. 3,500 trucks in one night means 7,000 people come to Tororo, but we don't have sanitation system. So I went and said, there's danger here. And yet we can turn that urine and feces that are deposited around Busia into power. And this is from knowledge from school, because anybody who has gone through a public health institution, you know about refuse and garbage disposal, we are taught that. So I was like, what, why don't we do something about this issue, this, this sanitation issue in Malaba? And nobody cared. One time we were talking about avenue planting. I still have a proposal of avenue planting, trees on, on roadsides. It's called avenue planting. It's something you see through exposure, through travel. Some of you are in the US, you see how US has planted trees along the roads. You, you drive literally in the forest. That is called avenue planting. I had a proposal and this one just went to west. When it comes to sports, I have so many proposals about stadiums, about what they just went west and I have seen now among coming up with the stadium. I'm wondering if not if one of my if not one of my proposals has been picked from National Council of Sports to create a stadium, because I have a feeling since uh, Magogo is the husband of they are now utilizing money from I mean there's a lot to talk about that country, but like I have said, garbage, Lake Victoria. I think about three months ago the monitor was talking about Pico contamination of water across the country. The whole country, whole Uganda has a contamination of water. So at one time, maybe a country will just break into dysentery. The country might break into cholera. 
And so calamities which are natural are going to hit Uganda and the army becomes useless. Like in Shitezi. Yes, people are mourning, but for me, I'm like, no. We need more of that for people to wake up. Because people in Kitas even don't see the problem. And you see, I think somebody one time compared that it's like you pluck off feathers from a hen and you throw it to eat maize and they will continue eating maize, forgetting that you are the one who plucked off feathers from it. Ugandans in Kitas are crying, Ragala government to Yambe. We need assistance. Yes, you need assistance, but from who? People are not rising up against that government. But like I have said with the time, every person is going to feel what bad governance is. So Canada, Saint Joseph, you know how much we've been talking about issue of migration. If people are not careful, migration might become a problem for us. But however, there's a reason for people who are oppressed, who have been here, who are here. But if you come out of stupidity and expose yourself like kind of hit, because if the ambassador is going, who are those people with him? You don't only take the ambassador away. So it's, it's a bit worrying, but those who have a clean stay in the US don't need to worry. But it can be weaponized to fight NRAism here, NRAism, I don't know how to put it, Musevenism in the United States. Joseph, let me work. I'll be listening. I had that a minute break, but I think it has I've overshot for almost 15 minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mugeni, for those wonderful remarks. Uh, thanks for the proposals you've uh, written. Um, of course, the garbage issue, as we said, the Chitesi. And it's unfortunate that uh, we are having more and more of these uh, kind of incidences, landslides, the Buddha, and what kind of tragedies, and we're still looking on. Um, as you said, proposals for Chitesi have been actually floating even in Uganda, what is happening in Ethiopia, turning the garbage into electricity, um, was proposed many years ago. In Uganda, in fact, I was just watching a clip. A uh, gentleman said they had come up with a proposal, but and they had American uh, uh, partners, but the KCCA, I think, asked for 10 percent, 10 percent cut. They said, Oh, you know, that sounds great, but we need 10 percent. And so the Americans said, You know what? We are out. So the whole thing fell apart because of corruption, because someone wants it, wanted a cut. You know, that issue would not have been there. So that's why this march to parliament, uh, corruption is uh, the, uh, you know, of course, Ms. Semini uses corruption as a way to sustain himself and and uh, as a, a, a patronage system, um, you know, uh, so he has some kind of something to blackmail people with, but we need to fight that. So thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Mugeni. And of course, uh, you talk about planting trees, uh, incidentally, you know, um, during the colonial period, uh, we actually planted trees all over. You know, a lot of the cities, uh, uh, towns in Uganda had trees planted, Mvule and whatever. So our forefathers knew the importance of, of things like this. So it's not really necessarily new. It's just that we have a regime that does not care. So we need to reclaim our country. Thank you so much for that. And now with that, I'm going to make quick opening remarks and then, um, and then because I did not, and then call on the the hands. So at the beginning of this uh, session, uh, Doc has played Popovich's um, clip uh, where he talks about people power, people power, and how it is the root. I mean, that's how you can remove a dictator with people marshalling themselves and going to the streets and doing what is necessary. And that's what's missing link right now. Uh, we are not thinking of picking up arms like we certainly did. People power is the opposite of uh, armed revolution. Um, so he talks about unity and how, you know, in um, unity either uh, in terms of like if, say, if it were an election, if you have like 10 candidates running against like in Uganda, usually it's two or three or, or several candidates running against them, 70, instead of running behind one person, 
that is, uh, you know, you know that the dictator is going to win. Uh, so the opposition has to overcome the division, say, you know what, we are going to work together to see that we get this guy out. Uh, if you don't have that and you're still within your little parties, that is giving the dictator the power. But the most important thing, uh, one of the other things you mentioned was unity in terms of like when you're taking action, forgetting your symbols, forgetting, uh, you know, like loop symbols, uh, FDC symbols. Uh, I gave an example of uh, Egypt. When they went protesting, the, the Arab Spring, they, they, uh, in Egypt, they protested under the Egyptian flag. They didn't wear their party colors. And so that brought everyone on the table and got the action. Uh, you know, they got everyone around the coast and they, were ma they managed to uh, uh, uproot uh, Mubarak. So people power is effective when we forget about our divisions and we rally behind the flag and say, you know what, we need to get rid of this dictatorship. And then we sort out, uh, you know, off, off, we sort out the uh, aftermath of that. Obviously, it helps when you are prepared so that things don't fall apart after the dictatorship is gone. But in the process of action, you need to work under the flag. You know, because if you have the symbols, some people are, are kind of turned away from the symbols because they don't associate with a particular symbol. So, so I think that was great. And then the one thing which also is said, you know, the, you know unfortunately, uh, the internet is great. You can click and you can, you can treat, but the non-violent struggle is one on the streets. That's the bad news. So that, yes, we are protesting, but ultimately we need to go on the streets. So ultimately, if you're going to use a non-violent struggle to remove the 70, it cannot be only on the internet, on Twitter spaces. We need to somehow marshal our resolve and go in massive numbers on the streets. So that's the bad news he said. And then, of course, it talks about Charlie. Um, I think uh, was I think yeah, Reggie was talking about how it's important for the leaders to be willing to take the risks. Um, to lead risk to their lives and to their persons um, to lead uh, because that's what leadership is about. And that was a very good point because when you look at the civil rights movement, people like Martin Luther King, people like Malcolm X, you know, I mean, <laughs> leadership is, is uh, if you really want to be a leader, you're willing, you should be willing to risk everything and lead the people to action. Uh, that's what Martin Luther King did. He went on the streets uh, through tear gas, through uh, uh, police dogs, fierce police dogs, through lynchings, through uh, church burnings. He was at the forefront of the struggle. Um, and interestingly, in Uganda, the leaders are somewhat protected in a sense that, okay, they can be arrested. They can even be uh, whatever. But in general, if they're arrested, that actually fuels the struggle. You know, people go out in massive numbers and say, oh man, free our leader, free our leader. So that could be actually something that, you know, uh, few was the struggle. But if we just talk and talk, again, our talk is cheap, action is what is needed. So we need more leadership uh, um, from our leaders and also to, you know, uh, we've been given opportunity of things like the traders and master parliament, which are partners. You know, these are opportunities whereby we can have our leaders uh, mobilize the population and say, guys, let's rally behind this cause because that's the only way we can get our country back. We cannot get our country back by just talking and lamenting and tweaking and, and protesting, though that is very important. Now, finally, the issue of people power, again, going back to people power, issue of the parliament of the of the ambassador in Canada being deported um, is really an example of people power because, and that's why demonstrations, why you cannot undercount demonstration, demonstrating. People say, what, a, what do demonstrations do? If 
Ugandans did not go to demonstrate against the NRM uh, event in Canada. The other ambassador would not have felt compelled to come and 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 confront them and expose herself, well, which then led to the Canadian government say, "Hey, this is not the feeding of an ambassador. This this is behavior, not the feeding of a, a diplomat." You know, she comes on, on the streets. Uh, the clip was uh, hopefully everyone saw the clip. She, she she's wearing yellow, and she's saying, "You know, you guys kidnap yourself." You know, you know when they asked her about kidnappings and abductions, she said, "Oh, you know, you know people, <laughs> you you." Kidnap and, and kill yourself and then blame the government. You know, she's wearing color. She's a diplomat. She's supposed to represent Uganda as a nation and Ugandans as a whole, but she was acting as a partisan and using a lot of diplomatic behavior. But what led her to that is people power. People demonstrating forced her to, to you know, she felt she was doing a uh, good job representing a dictatorship, and she came out in the streets to confront them. So don't underestimate the power of demonstrations. Uh, so yes, we in the diaspora, as we said, we need action on the, uh, in the ground in Uganda, but we also, this is the action we can take in Uganda because this is weakening the regime. These officials are being deported. Uh, of course, uh, there was another one from uh, UAE who was being deported, was being deported today because of was doing illegal activities at the embassy. I think they had a casino. Uh, so that kind of things are very, very important for us to, to take note of. Continue doing what we can wherever we are, take to the streets, demonstrate, but also find a way uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to support our people at home that are trying to take action. So thank you so much for that. And um, now I'm going to take hands. I see uh, someone asked me, this man wants to be OD or my host. I don't consider you're the horse. I'm not a co-host. I'm a co-host. I don't know if I can make you. You're the host already. So, Lucas uh, will ask me to make you a host, but you're already a host. But yeah, so with that, I will uh, call on. Or oh, Lucas, can you take over? Lucas, you're a host, but on a on a on a on a device without a microphone. <laughs> so I'll call on Paul for now. Uh, let's see, Paul. Can you please? Uh, uh, unmuted, yes, Joseph, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, thank you very much for the mic. Uh, mm -hmm. I greet you, I salute you all, uh, fellow Ugandans who speak up. Uh, um, I always remind ourselves why we are here. Why are, why are we on this platform? Um, this platform should be actually attracting so many people. Uh, uh, sorry, Paul. Um, uh, we have a memory silence. I almost I forgot that. Uh, Docus is playing the clip. So can you please uh, um, pause for a second and and uh, we go through that and then we zoom. Uh, is it done? <laughs> sorry, maybe I missed the beginning of it. Uh, Docus, uh, is that the end of it? And that was changed, and their life, their lives has been taken just like that with the, with the guns, whose taxes we pay. Uh, the, I mean, in, in in the in the classified budget, in the in, in the UPDF budget, in the security budget, and and which we still have a lot of debt, huge debt to pay. 
and we are paying for our own misery. And and and, and you, as you already mentioned, uh, unless we wake up all uh, all of us and try to bring an end to this, uh, this has been dragging and it's been going slow. Even though when we get some wins, we celebrate. Yeah, that's good to celebrate because at least we don't lose hope. That gives us hope. Um, our mem our momentum in the, in the non-violent struggle hasn't hasn't been uh, as great because of so much diversions, uh, disruptions, uh, and not because we don't want to continue with the struggle. We have uh, the, the country's struggle that unite that is the struggle for all of us, and also we have individual struggles so that we actually on a daily basis we face. And uh, and uh, and that, that's what that's why we are here. And then this platform, um, it's been here for now four years, and uh, it is, this this platform should attract so many people of um, especially our representatives to join us and demand for the justice that we are demanding every single Saturday, and every single Wednesdays and all those days that we we have we use this platform. And 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 that that shows uh, either people are either very busy to bother and 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 have and pick interest in this platform, uh, or they are all also busy on their own platforms. So everyone is having their struggle using the, uh, their own platforms. But I would urge uh, leaders, th those who call themselves our representatives, to join to join us. And encourage us, and and then and also lead us while we're here. Give us updates. Uh, give us uh, all the dodgy deals that are happening in Parliament uh, as whistleblowers, and then we can debate about them. But most importantly, we are here to demand for our justice. Uh, the uh, the stolen elections elections in 2021. They on record. They will, even if we go. Up to 2040, this is going to be on the on the on the on the, in, on the history, and then those people who have uh, stood against justice in the way of justice, they will still be judged and be held uh, responsible, whether in currently, in the future, or in the past, what they've done. They will be held uh, accountable. And um, at the beginning of this uh, uh, today's uh event i mean today's theme there was uh that powerful speech about uh how do we uh remove dictatorship uh non violently you mentioned it and i don't want to repeat uh and i've already mentioned things that why the struggle will take so long is how long would it would it take for the people to unite you know and to realize that we have an issue, and our issue is dictatorship, that is M7 and M7 is in. And in 2021, um, after seeing Chaguani come as, as, as someone who's not been in politics for so many, for, for a long time, and come up and Ugandans united behind him to make sure that that he, 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 he occupies the office and he leads us uh, against all um, all force and Ugandans who are united, but only to be denied the chance uh, for the, for what they chose by only a few, a few people who make decisions, like the judiciary, like the electoral commission, like the uh, partisan police and the military, you know? And, uh, and now people, the leaders that we elect should be encouraging the people uh they are going through their people and tell them look we're in a dictatorship last time we didn't unite because if we had united we would have had fdc upc uh all, all political parties which are, which claim to be opposition to be uniting one person who is giving seven headache and that was people power and it's still up to now it is people power you know so if we are dreaming of going in 2026 and we have still having different candidates, you know, the, 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 we're having different, they just agree to just have one candidate to use all political parties to have one candidate and we rally behind him, okay? And we should have convincing reason why this candidate 
uh, uh, public should, uh, uh, the public should be convinced why this candidate should be the one that we unite behind, okay? And it should be deserving, yeah, in that position to lead us, okay? And I mean, Uganda and Zetas, like we put our, our political flags to one side and have one thing that unite us to remove Museven, okay? Um, NRMs are, are not celebrating because of what, what has happened recently, uh, because they always want to enjoy impunity. But only a few voices that are being raised on, on the social media, they put pressure and we started getting uh, some kind of justice. Like and that uh, Uganda ambassador to Canada has been mentioned, uh, ambassador to, to the United Arab Emirates in the, has been mentioned. And uh, also we hear some uh, people are, are having visa bans, yeah? Is that, that's, that's the result of those people or those you patriotic Ugandans who turn up and protest, okay? And uh, even though we are not removing M7, but we are raising awareness, you know? We're raising awareness and, 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 and it is those, uh, the, it is online protests that we are using, first raise awareness, but then also we should also after after here we go on the on the ground and have civic education and so that people can be taught their rights that you can protest peacefully, don't be dragged into turning uh, violent uh, because that's where I'm seven uh, thrives. You know, be that that's the only solution uh, to, to what we are doing. We need unity. We need leaders who are not hypocrites. Uh, and I mean cultural, religious, and also these political leaders. We want people who are standing with the people of Uganda, okay? Um, so once we get that, but at the moment, we are having citizens who are actually pushing this struggle, like volunteers, you know? Like you and I are volunteers in this. We, have, we haven't had um, an organization like religious uh, leaders or cultural leaders coming up strongly and condemning the uh, the, 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 the 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 misrule in Uganda. It is only individuals like you and me, us Ugandans. You know that's why that's what we call patriotism. It's not worshiping Museven and his son to be patriotic. You know, and that's what people have been always being uh been trying to do. They they just follow money, money. They want money. They they they're, they're thinking about money, but they're, they're not thinking about the, that 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 they, they, our mother land Uganda is is a is a, a sinking ship, you know, and no and everyone in it is going to drown if we don't wake up. So um, the key points uh for 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 the, the key points that we pick into uh we we emphasize in today's uh uh this this zoom is. We need to question our leaders, whether they are religious, political, cultural, are they united? Do they have things that unite them? Okay? And then can we have accountability? Can we hold some people accountable for some things? And Ugandans, are you doing enough? Right? Are you doing enough? Okay. If you're not doing enough, then you need to think think twice and then Try to do to double to double to pull up your socks, um, and uh, what one at the beginning we had our comrade who had a, a powerful prayer and that was uh, is it Ray Ray what was Reggie. it yeah. Reggie 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 yeah Reggie had a powerful prayer and uh, he says that we are deserving we are all uh, under the, the eyes of God we are all equal why should other people be uh, enjoy the impunity the, and, and while other people are suffering, why? That's not that's not what we believe. We we want to lead. Uh, uh, we want to lead by example. We want to treat everyone the way we want us, ourselves to be treated. So that's why we are demanding justice, and 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 peacefully. When when we unite, we shall overcome and we shall win. And I really appreciate for the the mic. I wish to hand it back. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul, for those remarks, uh, emphasizing uh, the importance of of uh, uh, running behind a political candidate. If you are going in elections, I personally <laughs> have a, a total uh, reservation to, to 2026, and uh, I believe we should have something should be done way before 2026 because I don't 
you know, so many things that Museveni is planning, potentially even uh, preempting the election by uh, having parliament choose choose the next president. So I'm not looking for 2026, but as I said, if you were to head there, it would be best if you are everyone rally behind one candidate. Um, though, given our politicians, it's <laughs> it's really uh, hard to see them uniting behind uh, one candidate. Uh, I know of previous occasion, even for people power, I know someone who was involved, I think was it 2020, 20, 20, 2016 elections, uh, where I think Messi Gay had gone to it was some attempt to get them to rally behind one candidate, our position to rally behind one candidate. And I know someone was involved in discussions in London. It had Kofi Annan. I think Kofi Annan was there. And I think Obasanjo, they tried to get Messi uh, and Muntu. And I think see all these parties work together. And, you know, they it fell apart. You know, they don't want to work. Everyone is looking to be the leader. And it's, it's, it's you know, and Museveni, I don't know, it's because people within the parties are, uh, compromise or whatever. So it's hard to envision that, but that is exactly the way to go. If we are to take on Museveni, we need to rally behind one candidate, forget about, you know, like the, uh, the different opposition parties and say, okay, you know what? You are most likely to lead us where we need to go. Let's all do that. But that is not, yes. But let, yes. Ah, let me finish. Let me finish. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. yeah let, me, let me finish my point. So, that would be the, the best thing, um, though I don't necessarily see it happening. So I personally have reservations reservation about 2026. I don't really want to get even to election because in 70, just, you know, the electoral commission is still the same. As you said, the judiciary is still the same. The police and army are still the same. And uh, so they can find any types of means to, 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 uh, to uh, you know, to, to, dis to discount with people's choice. And a lot of our people abducted, killed, and many of them from 2021 are still missing or in prison. So, you know, action, people, power, and getting to the streets, doing something is really what I personally would prefer. All right, so Paul, you wanted to say something quickly before I pick on someone else. Yeah, go ahead, Paul. Yes, uh, I, Joseph, I think you're absolutely right. And it, it, because even in 2021, even though, uh mm -hmm. we were we, we 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 actually won that's why we are always protesting here because we believe we won and that was the people power not not the, these political parties the people mm -hmm. power rallied behind uh uh one year one unusual politician who is not who doesn't want to be called a politician and that's bob wine and we right. still stand that is the president of uganda he himself says is the is a is the president of uganda if they if they are uh, disagree with that if they think that that is wrong. They them arrest him because because that that's that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the, uh, the fact the fact you know the uh, seven government uh, they did not um, uh, they they do not even show any willingness to have uh, an independent audit in the twenty twenty one election anyway, which means that uh, actually the people won. So we can still do it, but this time around it's going to it's going to be different. Like you said, we don't want to reach in twenty twenty one. We need to set uh, standards which are supposed to be looked at as, as is that a, an election. Looking back in 2021, up to now, so many uh, Ugandans have been were abducted. We just remember some of them were killed. So how, how long are we going to go on with this? So we must not reach in 2021 because that's why we've been demanding justice. We shouldn't reach there in 2026. We shouldn't reach there. We should now, 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 you know? Thank you so much, Paul. Oh, that was Thank, great you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. So, Mr. Ben, Bayanja, can you please unmute and, uh, and contribute? Uh, Mr. Ben, Bayanja, Mr. I can unmute him. Yes. Yes. Uh, good evening, morning, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, you see, I'm here with Comrade Munyarwanda Wa Bobby. I think. Most of you, you know him. He fled out of the country. Yesterday, uh, we received him as a Kenya chapter. He's here with us. And he wanted to say a word to the diaspora community. Sure. So, I'll talk to 
Tuandike, <tos> 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 <t